One of the powerful features of Blender are its physics tools. You can create all sorts of cool physics simulations, and best of all, you don't need to be good at physics. Although, if you do have some knowledge of physics, it would be quite advantageous. So, let's get straight into it. To add physics to our objects, we go to the Physics tab of the Properties window. So, in our Properties window, we scroll down until we can see the last tab, which is our Physics tab. So, let's briefly look at what each of these buttons do. So, I'm just going to quickly delete the camera and lamp because we don't need them, and just select the cube. First, we have the force field. When you click the force field, your selected object will become a force field. So you can use this to recreate a scene where Moses parts the Red Sea. All other objects that have physics properties will be affected by this force. And you can control things like how strong you want this force to be, such as a strength of 20, and that will extend out even further. Next up, we have the collision object. The collision object lets Blender know that your selected object is a collision object, so that objects that have physics properties in them will not be able to penetrate through your collision object. Next up, we have cloth. This setting allows your object to become a cloth. So this is best to simulate clothing. So we, you can't see example quite well over here. So let's, for example, turn this object into a collision object turn off cloth and let's just create a very quick skirt also of some sort so I'm just gonna put the object over here and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete the face in the bottom and the face on the top X faces only and uh, I'm just gonna select the top uh, loop by alt right clicking the top loop there and scale it in now I'm gonna go ahead uh, maybe just might add more loops because the cloth simulation needs uh, vertices to play with as well. Okay, now since we have our cube set as a collision object, we can go ahead and enable a physics property on this to be cloth. So let's just click that. And now when I play back my animation, we have our skirt colliding with the cube. So in one go, we have simulated cloth and collision. And these settings here allow you to control how you want your cloth to look. And there are also some presets here like cotton, denim, leather, rubber, silk. You can choose whatever you like. If you don't like those settings, then you can obviously um, tweak your own settings to your own liking. Moving along, the next one is dynamic paint. You would use the dynamic paint for textures that need to change during animation. So for example, a painter painting a wall. You will notice that while a painter is painting the wall, the color of that wall changes. And now that's quite difficult to do in 3D animation when you've already selected the material to be a, a specific set material. So when you want your material to update in real time while it's being animated, you would use a dynamic paint tool. The soft body tool, this is used to make your object all blobby and gooey. So you would use it for things like custard and jelly. Next up, we have smoke. This is used to simulate smoke and fire, and this can be used to create anything from a calm campfire to a deadly nuclear explosion. Now there are a lot of settings here, and these obviously require uh, tutorials on its own, because there's a lot to cover here, and uh, quite a bit to get your head around, so I'm just going to skip it for this video. Next up, rigid body and rigid body constraints. These are used to create more higher-end physics-related stuff. So, if you wanted to simulate a stack of cards falling or dominoes falling, you would use this. If you wanted to simulate a car crash, you would use this. If you wanted to simulate a jar being filled with marbles, then you'd probably use the rigid body simulator. So, those are the main physics tools that you can use in Blender to create awesome physics-related effects. And best of all, you don't need to be a physics expert. So now you know about the capabilities of Blender and its physics tools. In the next video, we will go ahead and actually use the physics tool to create a cool physics simulation. So keep blending.